Hello, everybody, and here we are once again with another edition of this buffoon in the person of Daryl Edward Brooks. He is a buffoon pretending to be an attorney and has no clue, has no idea what he is doing. So let's listen in. And of course, y'all know the routine. Anytime I hear verbal diarrhea. And that's what I've been hearing a lot. Especially when it's coming out of his mouth. (laughs) If I hear verbal diarrhea, it will be debunked. It will be debunked. Come on, let's dive in here. In this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments. And for the record, I do not consent to being called that name. The record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is in street clothes, wearing uh, a suit and tie and a mask. I don't consent to being called that name, Your Honor. Whatever. I understand. For sir. the record. And All right, I now. Okay, now. I've advised you previously that I will continue to refer to you at exactly. times by that name. Exactly. I believe it's appropriate given the charging instruments in this case. And not only that, he referred to him being Daryl Brooks upon apprehension at Daniel Ryder's house. So anyway. Oh, and sounds like other evidence now that's been received during the course of this trial where. Um, I believe we are using the accurate name. Absolutely. With that, I do I need to... Shut up. Agree to shut, that up shut up. Shut up. You're Daryl. You're Daryl. You're, Daryl. you're an animal. Consent is noted. So before we uh, go f- forward, I need to put a couple of things on the record. I know uh, Mr. Brooks has filed some things, but before I get to that, um, as I told the parties on Monday, I had excused one of the jurors for a health reason. Um, And it has come to my attention that I now have a second juror um, with the same health concern. Out of an abundance of caution, I am going to bring the jurors out to question them about their, um, whether any of them have any uh, concern about continuing to serve on this jury. Given uh, the health concern, I am referring to um, a COVID concern. Um, I'm not going to ask any particular juror whether they've tested positive or not or whether they've had an exposure, I think I, but I am going to ask them questions about their uh, um, willingness to continue serving, whether it's interfering at all with their ability to pay attention. Um, Out of an abundance of caution, we have brought in two air purifiers, although I am told uh, that because of the new building and the HVAC that's in this building, um, and I received this from our uh, facilities manager, the new HVAC system in the Quartz Tower has a UV light system that disinfects the air at a higher air exchange rate than the purifiers, and that the system was specifically designed so that no special standalone systems are needed, but again, out of an abundance of caution, we've had two air purifiers put in this courtroom. I'm putting a third one in the jury room. We have also uh, provided jurors, should they wish, uh, with masks. We've increased the hand sanitizers and the disinfecting wipes. We've always had uh, the hand sanitizers around. Uh, There's one on uh, the jury box at the moment. Um, And they've been in uh, the jury room. I'd also like to put on the record that uh, I did advise the jurors on Monday that one of the jurors was not going to be with us any longer due to a health concern. I asked them at that point if anyone had uh, any concern. I did indicate at that point it was a possible exposure, and uh, they all indicated no, they didn't have any concerns. But again, you know what, a- can I just say that you can tell that Judge Duro had her coffee because she is just going right now. <laughs> My, my, my. Abundance of caution. I feel it's important to now uh, question them uh, while they're in the jury box uh, to ensure that there aren't any issues related uh, to that. But I guess dealing with dealing with Daryl Brooks, you're going to have to have some type of caffeine. 
just to put up with all. <laughs> so with that, I am going to instruct the jurors to be brought out for that purpose. And then they'll be excused after that so we can continue uh, the discussion uh, regarding that and then deal with, if need be, the other uh, issues and filings that have been uh, brought to my attention today. All right, so the jurors are going to be brought out. By the way, um, as we are waiting the jurors, um, do y'all remember there was a point in the trial where Daryl uh, was seemingly concerned about the juror and wanted to know, well, shouldn't they be tested and all that? See, that was a part of his plot. That was a part of his plot. And that plot was delay, 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 delay. Or should I say mistrial, mistrial, mistrial? Because that's what he was really aiming for. That was the aim. Because theoretically, he did not have a defense at all. I'm going to tell you why he didn't have a defense. Do y'all remember in the in the origins, or should I say the beginning, or should I even say the the preliminary? Preliminary means the beginning, the origins of this case. Do y'all remember when Sue Opera had read a slew <laughs> of Daryl Brooks's criminal behavior? And what he was charged with, his, just, his criminal history. It was almost like she was reading an entire essay. Y'all should remember that because I was, I was saying Jesus the entire time. I said Jesus so much that a Christian asked me, please don't use the Lord's name in vain. <laughs> and I want to apologize for that. I want to apologize. I, I was only saying Jesus because I was in such disbelief. I couldn't believe what I was hearing <laughs> relative to the multiplicity of the charges, relative to the multiplicity of criminality. And that this man, that this man, given the multiplicity of criminal behavior, was even permitted or allowed to be out on bail with a, a precipitously low bail amount. They tell me his bail was only $1,000. 1000 so that means, you know what 10% of 1000 is? That means Dawn Woods was able to come up with $100 to release her animal or her monster. That's how he was able to write. Right. And by the way, somebody told somebody told me that as a result of all this, they have set new laws, standards in the city of Waukesha in terms of the bail. They have new bail laws. And it's really sad that it took this situation just to make that alteration. It took this situation just to make that modification. But anyway, let's get back into this. Now, you know what? Wait a minute. Let me say this too while the jury is coming out. Watch this. I wouldn't be surprised if one of the jurors is probably you know, just just add, you know, saying that they had COVID just to get out of this. Can you imagine dealing with three weeks with this clown? They had to put up with three weeks dealing with this nonsense. So they might have used COVID as an excuse. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Now, that's speculation. I'm not saying that that happened. That's speculative. All right, let's get on. Let's get on. Ain't nobody worried about no, um, no, no subject. Not at this time. I don't know if the audio is on, but. Yeah, it should have been off because we're tired of hearing that crap. 
All right for the jury. All right, the jury is making their way in. They're going to be questioned by our beloved judge, Jennifer Duro. Wait, if you could bring me that. Daryl ain't got a chance in hell. He's just like ice inside of a microwave that's cooking. Ain't got a chance in hell. Michael, I'm gonna hand you this. You're not gonna take testimony. Oh, I know what I want. I'm sorry. I know what I wanted to say about a, a, attorney Jeremy Perry. Now that was the one that was representing him previously. Once Sue Opera had read those slew of charges against him, do you know the only defense that Attorney Perry had? And it really wasn't even a defense. It was that he was indigent. And so he was trying to make an argument relative to the high, to the bail that was astronomically high. Sue Opera was advocating five million dollars so attorney perry said well wait a minute this man is indigent well apparently you know he he got us public defender he can't afford an attorney so how is he how's he going to afford to get out of jail so his only def watch this so my point is the only defense was that he was broke <laughs> oh please that was a weak defense. And I'm not and I'm not going to get on attorney Perry for that because guess what? Attorney Perry was limited in terms of defense because theoretically there was no defense. That's just like a person that does not have a hairline. In other words, if you ain't got a hairline, then you can't give the barber anything to work with. What am I saying? Daryl Brooks's crime didn't produce anything for attorney perry to work with that's how bad it was <laughs> you didn't hear me all right well, let's get back in mm. thank you everyone please be seated ladies and gentlemen of the jury i brought you out here we are uh not taking testimony at the moment i have made a record previously uh regarding um, COVID-related concerns with the jurors. I know you are all aware that one juror was excused uh, due to a health concern. I also put on the record that on Monday when I advised the jurors of that, I asked you all if um, anyone had a concern regarding that and that no one indicated they had a concern. Um, I have been made aware of a second um, issue uh, and potential exposure. And so I wanted to make a record in open court and to ask each one of you if any of you have any concerns about continuing your service in this case due to exposure to uh, COVID. And so I'm just going to go uh, through each one. Um, probably, hopefully I can see all of your numbers from here. I'll just start uh, from the back row and move from my left to right, front row, my left to right. And um, I also want to let you all know uh, we have a very, very good um, HVAC system. I made a record of this while you were not here. Um, but this is a new building. It has brand new technology. I've been told that the HVAC system in the Quartz Tower, and this was told to me by our uh, facilities manager, um, has a UV light system that disinfects the air at a higher air exchange rate than purifiers, but out of, out of an abundance of caution. And I've had two air purifiers also put in this courtroom, and I've had one put in um, the jury room. I believe you would be able to confirm for us as well that when you got into the jury room this morning, there were extra sanitation supplies along with masks. And so with that, I am just going to identify you by number. Uh, first of all, juror number 11, um, do you have any concerns about continuing your service in this case uh, specifically related to COVID? No concerns. All right. Thank you. Uh, let me actually go back to you. Would, has it, uh, would the fact that you may have been exposed in any way um, in interfere with your ability to pay attention uh, and ultimately render a verdict in this case? 
All right, thank you. And then let's see. I know our bars were like juror number forty-eight. I you love can also answer those two I, questions. You know, I, I'm sorry. I, I just, I just like, I love the way she conducts, and she, she's an awesome judge. I just love it. All right, thank She's you. She's so professional. And juror number 46. No concerns. Thank you. Juror and very number astute. 34. Notable. Thank you. Juror number 27. No, also. Thank you. Juror number 30. No concerns. Thank you. Juror number 1. No concerns. Thank you. And then what's your number? Six. Six. Juror number 6. Uh, no concerns. Thank you. And then juror number 14. I'll just start there. No concerns. Thank you. Juror number 10. No concerns. Thank you. Juror number 51. No Thank you. Juror number. Look, look it down. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Juror number 19. No Thank you. Juror number 41. No Thank you. And juror number three. No All right. Is there anything I haven't asked of the jurors or any other concerns related to that that you would want to bring to my attention? If so, just raise your hand. There are no hands raised. I can also tell you um, uh, from our initial days of COVID when we started up jury trials, we do have plexiglass panels that I could put in between anyone who would want one. Um, is there anyone here who would want that? If so, raise your hand. No hands are, are raised. Um, that's really all I have. I don't know if there's anything either the parties would want me to ask the jurors from the state no, on this topic. All right, Mr. Brooks. Uh oh. All right. Thank you. I'm going to excuse the jurors then, and then. Um, by the way, gonna... by the way, while the jurors are being excused, I have to say this. Now, this trial was over last year. I believe it was 2022, and we already in 23, and I am astonished. And I'm going to tell you why I'm astonished. I'm astonished because I'm surprised that we have not heard from one of them jurors. <laughs> Wouldn't it be interesting just to hear the input of some of them juror, jurors just to get, you know, just, just enlighten us on what, what was y'all thinking? during that trial when did you make your decision was it right away see that see i like the that's what i want to know and what did y'all feel about when he was at, at cutting a fool in front of y'all and judge doro was trying kept excusing them in and out of the courtroom i would like to ask them did they feel any frustration Listen, let me tell y'all something. Y'all remember when they had the press conference and that had involved the state, the DA, the prosecutors, and the prosecutors were being asked questions concerning the trial. I think would have been more appropriate if those jurors had been <laughs> at that press conference. Yeah, I think that would have been real mo much more important cuz I I would would have been wondering what, what was they thinking? What does y'all think about that? We already know what was reflected in in the verdicts. But I would love to know at what point did y'all say, you know what? This man is guilty as charged. <laughs> oh, that's what I would love to do. All right, let's dive back into this. We'll have you brought back out, and thank you so much. All right, so the jurors are leaving. They are making their exile. Again, this is the 13th day of the trial. Mr. Brooks has only but a short time. <laughs> only a short time. You know what Mr. Brooks reminds me of? There's a Bible. Hold on. There's a Bible. There's a scripture in the Bible where it says that 
the devil knows that he has but a short time. And so by default of him being aware or cognizant of him having just a short time, so what is he going to do? He's going to cut up and act up. What am I saying? Brooks knew that his time was short, that the inevitable was coming. And so what did he do? He started cutting up in the tribe. Mm, Y'all ain't saying nothing. He start even being more of a fool. Come on now. And so this ain't nothing but a parallelism or reflection of what the Bible speaks of concerning Satan. My, my, my. All right, come on through here. Look at the devil with a mask on. Look at the devil there. Thank you, be seated. With a with a with a with an erased hairline. Go ahead. We counted 15 jurors in the courtroom. I excused one. Uh, you excused one earlier in the week, too, though. No, no, no. I'm only talking about the one. The other one I didn't Two excuse. a little confused. I see. Uh, and, okay. And, and thank you. I'll make a record of that. I, I did not excuse given when that person reported their symptoms and where we're at today. So it would be... So that person is here. Yes. And, and willing to continue serving. Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Sure. Um... And I will make a further record that none of the jurors are wearing masks. Um, and um, I'm not going to mandate. I believe it's a personal choice. Right. Um, and that would decision. also be consistent with, I believe, our county policies as well. So unless there are anything related to that, I have a couple of other issues I need to address this morning. Housekeeping. Go the ahead. person that's, or the two people rather that, that are having the COVID concerns. Um, I know you said you wasn't going to ask them uh, had they test positive or the results of any testing. Uh, do you know? Do you know if there has been exposure on their end to COVID exactly, or is that just a caution thing? Um, my understanding is that I've had two jurors test positive throughout the course of this. Program. And, and I'd make a further record that they're the only ones within six feet of each other, right? They, and perhaps our civilian bailiffs, um, and uh, they've not been in, obviously, contact with anyone in the gallery. They, I don't know if maybe Attorney Opera might be within six feet. And by the, and by the way, they, they, they already said she just asked every juror. Was there any concerns? And they confirmed no. So why is Daryl so concerned? I'm going to tell you why he concerned. He's not authentically concerned. This is just a gambit to try to further delay. That's all that is. <laughs> um, I don't think so, but I haven't measured it. <laughs> Obviously, you're not within six feet of any of them. Um, but that's a good question to ask, and I'm glad you asked that. And I, I wanted to make a record of that as well. Yeah, that's that was be my question to it um, I guess in reference to uh, me myself just having the same concern uh, oh no, notice he said the same concern but then we found out that the concern that you had concerning yourself having COVID was a lie <laughs> you lied because the results came back. And then let me ask the audience this. Do y'all remember when those results came back? And she told Mr. Brooks, all right, locate the paper, get the paper. And then he said, I don't consent to that. Well, why would he say I don't consent to that when he's the one that raised the concern, watch this, of being concerned of having COVID? And then when he was asked to take a rapid test, Judge Duro said, if, if, if I were to offer you a rapid test now, would you take one? And that's when he declined. And see, that's when you know. All right, wait a minute. This ain't, this ain't adding up. 
Because if he was so overly concerned about him having COVID, wouldn't it make sense for him to take a rapid test to find out if he has it? So that way that can bring finality to his concern. Oh, oh y'all didn't hear me. <laughs> this man is full of, you know what, come on, let's get back in it. All the details that I... reason why I would want to know exactly any details that could be provided. I'm providing all the details that I will. Um, again, for the record, you have not been exposed, from my opinion, because of the distance that right. you are away from them and my understanding based upon my review of county policy. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not saying I, me, myself, have been Understood. exposed. Well, that's why I asked them, though, too. Right? Exactly. I wanted to make sure they had no concerns or if they had a concern to see if I could accommodate it in any way. Um, I'm satisfied that if they don't have a concern that we can continue forward. Exactly. They don't have a concern. So why does he have a concern? <laughs> because that's a part of his strategy. Or should I say his failed, failed strategy. And I can definitively say his failed strategy. Because he's in a correctional facility right now. So apparently he failed make sure they had no concerns or if just like subject matter jurisdiction he kept saying that guess what that failed <laughs> just like he was concerned over the throttle body of the vehicle guess what that failed because it was inspected by Schultz <laughs> see everything they tried to do Everything his mother tried to do, everything he tried, every excuse, it failed. <laughs> I guess you can say he's a failure. I had a concern to see if I could accommodate it in any way. Um, I'm satisfied that if they don't have a concern, right. that we can continue forward. Move forward. Have they ever, the entirety of the jury, though, have they been exposed oh, in any way? I don't know the specifics because of the six foot right rule and um, no one has asked me to investigate that further. Wouldn't it be smart though to see? Oh, wait a minute. What did you hear what he just said? Wouldn't it be smart? Let me ask you a question. Wouldn't, what, uh, were you smart representing yourself? Watch this. Wouldn't it be smart to hire a real attorney? Wouldn't it be smart not to get rid of Attorney Perry? <laughs> Let's not try to impugn or challenge somebody on being smart. Giving your unintelligent behind. Stupid. Don't you dare ask somebody, wouldn't it be smart? Because there's nothing smart about you. Um... I don't believe that's necessary under the circumstances. Well, anything just for future reference, like, what if it plays a part later on? Well, I'll certainly take your concerns under advisement, and if I believe any further questioning needs to be done, I'll do that. At this point, I, I don't believe it needs to be done, but I'll think about that, and I'll take it under advisement, and if I change my mind, I'll let you know. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, because if anything, it, it probably would be smart for the long run and make sure no one else you know, wait a minute I gotta cut him off I, he told me it probably would be smart guess what guess what it probably would have been smart for you not to run over those people and kill those people and now exacerbate your situation given the fact that you were already out on bail already dealing with charges and so now as a result there's an exacerbation now. There's an enhancer now. There's added charges now. So tell me where bail jumping is smart. So why would you impugn the judge in terms of what is smart? 
You fool! You fool! It's compromise, considering that. Let me make yeah. a record there. No one has indicated they are compromised. I don't think we can make assumptions about how anyone who's been exposed or tested is feeling. You can be asymptomatic and test positive. You can have mild symptoms. I trust my jurors that they right. will report if they're not able to sit through the proceedings. You can also even be asymptomatic and have it and not even know it. And I will, but I will further advise them through the bailiffs that they are to report any, if they ever get to a point where they feel they're not able to sit through here and if, um, so that we're advised and I can tell yeah, the But they don't have any consent from Judge Dora. Monday, which at that time it wasn't only, could have been, now, leave it alone. been just not feeling well, could have been anything. And then today is, then leave it alone. worry about tomorrow, Friday, over the weekend. Mr. Brooks, I share all of those concerns. But my other concern is that we are in the third <clears throat> week of trial. Right, let's get through this. And that we no should keep delay. going until... Uh, the conclusion of this matter, Absolutely. understanding uh, what has happened. Absolutely. All right. I just wanted to put that on the record because I appreciate that. It seemed like the circumstances were different when it was me. Yeah, but when it was you, when it was with you, we found out that it was a lie because those COVID results came back, and it came back negative. That's why you was crying in that auxiliary courtroom. <laughs> circumstances were different when it was me so that so that should mean that there's a difference between the truth and a lie the jury was telling the truth you were caught in a lie so you can't use that the jury clearly all congregate together I think it would be smart don't talk about what's smart don't talk about what's smart because you are clearly dumb. Dumb. And I can prove that you're dumb. How the hell are you going to subpoena a witness to uh, 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 come on? A witness to come to court. And then you're going to ask her what was she subpoenaed for? Now tell me how was that a smart question? Why wouldn't she know why she's there? Let's not start talking about what's smart. You need to be, we, we need to be exposing how dumb you are. To make sure everybody is tested. I mean, that, that's, that's, it would be smart to do that. Stop using smart. I'm not going to mandate testing for the jurors. Right, that much right. I can tell you. So that request is denied. Right. And right, so the grounds up. for the denial? I'm not going to mandate that the jurors be subjected to testing. They're the ones who... See, once again, he's doing this. They tried to cause a delay. That's, that's his whole gambit. Watch this. The whole time I've been saying that I didn't know what his defense was. Now I just now found out what his defense was. You know what his defense is? Delay. That's his defense. <laughs> Let's delay this. Because I've exhausted everything else. So what can I do? You know, remember he kept on saying this is a rush to judgment. What he don't he don't want to rush the jail. He don't want to rush to be convicted, so let's delay. That's the defense. <laughs> Indicated they are comfortable <laughs> being here. They don't have concerns. Oh. And again, I would trust them to report to me if anything changes. Right. That too, but it, would be, it still would refer back to Monday when the first knowledge of someone Damn having an illness or a potential illness <clears throat> Was those same questions that were asked today asked Monday? 
It's all oh, I did not. Leave it alone. I certainly questioned them much more. For, I, it was a very brief. I put what I said to them on the record earlier. It was certainly not what we did here today, and the record reflects that. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure, though, that all the jurors Monday said they didn't have any oh concerns my, as well. Oh, my God. And then now today, someone else. Same thing being said. So I understand what you're saying. If it happens again... Same thing being said. But are you making any specific requests as yeah, it relates to this topic and this issue? Well, you denied the request that. Any other requests? <laughs> I just feel like it's smart for them to be tested. Now, wait a minute. Now, notice he just said any other requests because she didn't. He just said you denied the request. And then she asks him again, any other requests? Then he goes back to the same thing that he's been saying the entire time. I think he goes back to I think it's smart. Well, she denied that. Those jurors did here's the point. Though those jurors didn't have any concerns. So despite him thinking it's smart for them to be tested, that that, that request was denied. So then she asks him any other request, then he goes back to the same thing. <laughs> this man is a fool and I, oh my so it doesn't so it doesn't come up again in the future or potentially come up again in the future because any other request now we'll you already said that back and saying well we could have prevented something like this from happening you already you said that any other request it was denied it's just it's just smart to Stop like you say you're on the side smart, of caution because there's nothing smart about you I appreciate that I'm going to continue. Exactly. I understand what you're saying. Um, but given the responses of the jurors today, I'm going to continue. Thank I'm you. going to base this Thank off of their desire to continue, at least no what I would delay. interpret as their desire Thank to continue with their service on this case. Thank you, Judge Doro. All right. Then I want to talk briefly about um, the jury view. I did uh -oh. provide the parties with um a proposed instruction before i get to that all right so ladies and gentlemen we are moving into another phase we're talking about the jury view and there's going to be opposition relative to the jury view coming from the so-called alleged defendant mr brooks i have been thinking about your request yesterday um, and I know I indicated to you that I would require you to be there. I've rethought that. I've had the overnight to really think about it. And um, if that is your decision to not be present for that, um, what I would say is this. You, I want you to be advised that you have a right to be at that jury. Yes, Did yes, you hear me say yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, you pretty much told me... Uh, yesterday about you know everything that was going on i just didn't i didn't agree to or consent to it being well i was still confused about why did there even need to be a jury view oh now wait a minute let's stop right there do you notice what he just said he was confused and he was basically pensive relative to why there was a relevancy of a jury view. Now, let me say this. Now, wait a minute. Now, common sense. That, and I always tell y'all, I always tell my audience, you know what I use? I always tell y'all that the best education that anybody can ever get is common sense. Common sense. And I think that this world would be a better place if everybody took a dose of it. Now, first of all, he's saying that he doesn't understand the relevancy as it relates to why there ought to be a jury view. Well, number one, isn't that vehicle the mechanism, mm, the instrumentality that was used it has been alleged that you used that vehicle and killed six people and injured a plethora of people. 
So why would it not be relevant for the jury to see the instrument that was used? That, or should I say, that that has been alleged to have been used. Let's get back into this. That was my whole thing. I, I didn't, I don't see the, the relevancy of it. Because you a fool. And I also didn't agree with, agree with or consent to having to be part of something that I you don't see as relevant. I appreciate you making a record of that. But did you hear what I said, that you have exactly. a right to be present for it? I've ruled that where, let me back up. There's been a request from the state to have the jury look at the vehicle that was recovered by the police and, of course, is alleged to be the vehicle that was driven through the parade. Thank you. Did you hear Thank me you. advise you of that? Yes, I heard. All right, so that motion was addressed previously, and I granted the request for that jury view. Did you hear me say that? Uh, I'm informed. All right, thank you. So with that, you have a right to be present at that jury view. Did you hear me say that? I'm informed. And um, I would like you to be there. I believe it is a piece of evidence. That's why I've uh, drafted jury instruction 152 the way that I did. Did you hear me say that? I'm informed. So my question to you then this morning is, do you want to be present at the jury view of the vehicle? Uh, I, I don't see the reason why I would need to be present. All right, fine. Well, that's my question to you though, is do you want to- be And then you have the right not to be there. <laughs> exactly, come on Judge Dora. Present okay. for it. You are the accused in this case. You're right. The person who the state has alleged committed these acts. Right. It's the jury view will be to view a piece of evidence that frankly can't come into the courtroom due to because its size. It's a vehicle. And the jury's going to be shown that. So right. Do you want to be present at that? For the record, I'm not a person, I'm a human being. No, you're an animal. And, uh,. <laughs> No, I do not consent to or agree to being present at a jury view. Well, fine. You ain't got to right, be Then I'm going to honor his request. But what I am going to do, though, is as part of that process in any event, because it's being done in a secure location, right. is um, I have ordered that a a, I want to make a record of what's being done. Exactly. And I want a visual record well, of what is being done. For the purpose of appeal. And so this jury view is going to take place in the sally port of the jail and precautions are being taken wow. so that the jurors do not know where it's at um it, they'll just it'll look like a garage right anything that says jail within the sally port is being covered up that will be verified before anyone is taken in there mm -hmm. they will be transported That's to right. there um it's i'm not sure if they'll walk or drive because it's very close um but then I, the sheriff's department, because um, it's as the court official, I'm in charge of keeping the record, not keeping the record, I'm in charge of making the record. It's the better way to say it. And I want to make sure that there's a record of what is done for this trial and certainly for any appellate purposes, if exactly. Need be. <laughs> the sheriff's department, excuse me, the sheriff's department is obviously charged with the security and safety of a courtroom, including the jurors. And so I have asked the sheriff's department to record. And so there is a camera with, uh, that will be on a tripod that will record what's there before anyone gets there. I've instructed them to take that camera to walk around the vehicle and while it's recording to put it back on the tripod. And Hold on, if I, can, I, can I interject? Can I interject? All right, so first of all, listen. Notice that Judge Duro is letting him know. First of all, you have the right to be there, and you don't. You have a right to not want to be there. Daryl Brooks doesn't want there to be a jury view. You know why? <laughs> That's not rocket science, ladies and gentlemen. He does not want to see the jury. No, excuse me. He doesn't want the jury to see. That vehicle in question that he used, watch this. 
as Judge Duro later asserted during the sentencing, that vehicle that he used as a battering ram. Watch this. No more, no different than a firing arm. Dal Brooks didn't want the jury to see that vehicle in question. That's why he said, I don't see the relevancy. He didn't want them to see it. Of course it's relevant. Of course that vehicle is relevant. That's an infamous vehicle. It might be on display. Watch this. No different than that same vehicle that President JFK was in when he was assassinated. That vehicle is still on display. Why? Because that's an infamous vehicle. What am I saying? That Ford Escape is an infamous vehicle. And so there is relevancy because that's the instrument that was used by Mr. Brooks, as we later discovered. All right, let's get back into this. And th before um, the jurors and the court are brought in, once we are brought in, it will also be recorded and that contemporaneous recording, um, so that will be as uh, I will walk, uh, we will walk around the vehicle uh, one time, that will be recorded, and then both of those recordings are going to be, be made part of the record. Um, because the second recording is for the record and has the jurors, um, at this point I'm going to seal it. Uh, so that uh, at least until the conclusion of the case, given the order that I have regarding the uh, what's referenced as an anonymous or numbered jury, so that will be sealed. Um, but what will be released to the uh, public or be made part of the public record, and so therefore any media request, would be that recording that just shows the vehicle without the jurors in it and without the court. So, and then I plan on also bringing that back to the courtroom while the Sheriff's Department's gonna bring it back and then we'll show it to you at that time. I, I have a question though. Uh, Go ahead. If, if I have a right to be present, then I have a right to not be present. How can this take place if I don't agree or consent to being present? How can it even still take place without, without uh, it, me? It will take place, sir. Exactly. I'm just exactly. going to honor your exactly. request not to be there. I'm asking. You know what? You, you know what this kind of reminds me of? Listen, if I take a gun and I murder somebody, it's almost like me saying, how can you lock me up if I didn't consent <laughs> to being locked up? <laughs> Listen, it's gonna, you're going to be locked up by default if there is sufficient evidence. Come on now. What am I saying? What am I saying? What, am I, what, what I'm saying is there is evidence. There's video evidence of him using this vehicle. There has to be a jury. There has to be a jury view. Watch this. If there was no jury view of the vehicle in question, then that means that's speculation. Mm, follow me. Why would the state bring forth speculation and tell the jury that he used the vehicle, but there's no jury view of the vehicle? No, 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 no. The state ain't bringing speculation. They bringing facts, bro. Mm. They're bringing the instrumentality that was used. Ah, come on through here. Question though, how can it take place without my consent or agreement? We don't need your consent. If you don't, 
It's going to take place. That's how it's I'm going to answer that, sir. Watch this. So you watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Do y'all remember when Judge Doro said, now this was after he was already convicted when those when those verdicts came in and it was time for sentencing. Judge Duro, he, he kept being extremely disruptive. The judge wanted him in the main courtroom as opposed to the auxiliary. So that way she can look him right in his face. And give that sentencing. But y'all remember when Judge Doro basically said, sir, you're, it, 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 that's when he started being disruptive. She said, you are just trying, if I can, if I can paraphrase, you're just trying to circumvent the inevitable. And so what is happening here? He's trying to, in other words, the point is, the jury is going to inevitably see the vehicle in question, even though he's trying to stop that process. In other words, he's not going to stop or prohibit. Oh, I need you to high five your neighbor and say, there's no, there's no prohibitions on the inevitable. <laughs> All right, let's keep on going. Going there is not going to prevent it from happening. Right. Wow. It ain't going to stop. Yeah. Yeah. But you can forfeit your right or to I be did. there I by did. your conduct. And by I your did. conduct, by not answering my question, by saying, I don't want to be there and I don't consent to it. Um, you will be forfeiting your right to be present and essentially waiving. Right, that's doesn't, right. Doesn't I have to sign something no. for it to be waived? You ain't got to sign I, nothing. I don't think so in this case. Well, yesterday you said something about uh. uh I know I said that, and I, I had some time mind. to think about that further. Um, and um, I don't believe I need to take a full waiver with you signing anything or even agreeing to the waiver. Um, so why did I have to do that for? When my, uh, oh, I'm not going to answer those questions because that would we, be for me to give you um, an explanation of the law. Right, which means that he should have never fired his counsel if he had questions. See, watch this. A lawyer is not supposed to ask a referee a question. <laughs> watch this. No different than Hulk Hogan wrestling rick flair and he's asking the referee well how do i do a headlock the referee ain't in there to, to, to be telling you what to do if you a wrestler then you supposed to know what to do the referee is just in there to keep order y'all ain't <laughs> y'all didn't hear me <laughs> um, no, I'm just going to tell you that I'm not going to require a written waiver from you in order to honor your request to not be at the, or even if I phrase it, your lack of consent to the jury view. And is that lawful yeah. law because... Sir, I'm, I'm not going to go through all the law that applies to that. This is exactly. my ruling. If you disagree with it and ultimately there is appeal. a conviction, you can raise that on appeal. But no, your lack of consent is not going to stop the jury view. It's, it's going, going to happen. Me. It's a piece of evidence that I cannot physically fit in this courtroom. Because it's, it's a vehicle. It, there's no way to get it in. Okay, I'm informed of that. But at the same time, if I haven't signed any waiver. You don't, we don't need your signature. I haven't given. Come on, this is crazy. That, that, that's, like, that's like me telling y'all, if I commit a crime and I get charged, then that means I'm basically saying I didn't sign to be charged. I don't consent to be in charge. What is he talking about? This is a fool. Oh. 
All right, let me find where we at. I know we've been running long. Wait a minute, hold on. I'm trying to find. Oh, I've that been was for the denial. I'm Let's see this here. On the record yesterday, my the first thing that I said was, I don't see the relevancy of why there should even be a jury view. And that's dumb right there because I, as I already explained, he was driving the vehicle that was alleged. So of course there's relevancy of a jury view. This man is, this man is nuts. Let's fast forward, I wanna see. Let's now, see where uh, we are. A request as it relates to any of that? <clears throat> Well, yeah, I'm. I'm still trying to understand the whole how how this is all working, and then it was a reference to. I mean, let's go back. Let's go back because I. I, I can which is, again, why there's no jury here now. I wanted to oh, wait. All right, all right. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. Car one time to look at it. We have no objection to that, and then the jurors will come in. No one will speak. They will do one lap around. The all right. So this is what I want to do, y'all. I want to go back. Just a little bit. You the United are, States Constitution or the Constitution of, of the state Your of Honor, Wisconsin. Are you not a public servant? Okay, Mr. Brooks, you're you're starting to cross the line. You've already crossed it, but I want to keep going. I, I want you in this courtroom. Line. But if you keep interrupting me and putting you on notice that um, it's, you are you run the risk of being uh, forfeiting your right to be present in this courtroom and continuing in the next courtroom, so that I can effectively. And without interruption, continue with the proceedings this so again, morning. So again, you're holding me in contempt. All right. Jury instruction 152 right. is the state Keep had an going. opportunity to review it. Is that a judicial determination that I'm being held in contempt? No, no, no. And Come on, Sue Lapper. Agree generally with the court's um, proposed instruction. I did submit kind of a counter proposed instruction following uh, much of the language that you had in your. Uh, version, Your Honor. I, I just think it's maybe better to refer to this area as a garage instead of a sally port. I don't know that anybody knows what a sally port is unless they work in this industry. And um, instead of referring it as being in the Waukesha County Jail, I just suggested uh, a garage attached to the Waukesha County Courthouse. I think that is factually accurate and would dispel any concerns about anybody being in custody or reference to a jail setting. I did email my proposed instruction to your clerk and I e-filed it, but I admittedly just did that uh, a few minutes ago. So that's why I emailed it to the clerk because it's probably not in your queue yet. All right, why don't we print that off so that Mr. Brooks can review that as well. Seem to be in court that name, but what do I need to be reviewing? The state has submitted an alternate proposal for instruction 152. And that's referring to this quote unquote jury view? Yes. See, he don't want no jury view. Well, you know, if you think about it, why didn't, here's the, let me ask y'all, let me ask the audience the question. And I want your input on this. Of course, I got my input. But my question is this. Why did not? This is my question to my audience, my subscribers. And by the way, I love y'all. <laughs> uh, listen. Y'all listen. Why? This is my question to the audience. Why did not Daryl Edward Brooks want a jury view? I just, I'm just, uh, I just want to hear y'all response about that. How come you, what, why do you think he didn't want the jury to see that vehicle? Because his defense relative to him opposing that didn't have any standing. Because he said he didn't see the relevancy. 
Well, that doesn't have any standing. It doesn't have any ground. It doesn't have any foundation. Considering that that vehicle was the instrumentality that was alleged to have been used. That was the allegation against him. That's why I say alleged to have been used because there was allegation. Let's keep going. Value this document. So that means he doesn't want it. No, like Somebody the record, gave him record something. to reflect, I still haven't um, received my original copies of my filings here this morning. Well, you still haven't received the hairline, but that's all right. Come on. With the timestamp. Mm -hmm. Honestly, y'all, I really don't see the purpose why he chose to be a pro se defendant. Let me know when you've had an opportunity to review it if you so choose. I just stated for the record, I accept for value and return for value the document. In other words, he didn't want it. Do you have any position on this state's What's proposal? the position? I'm, I'm still trying to understand the whole process. Wait a minute. I'm still trying to understand the whole process. But I fire my attorney. I, I fire people that knows the process. <laughs> but I put my, I make myself an attorney and I don't understand. Now, what sense does that make? What do you think the Court of Appeals is going to think about that? Do you think the appellate court is going to buy this BS? In other words, he knew the danger of representing himself. The judge went through a colloquy with him before the danger of representing himself in the absence of being an authentic attorney. And so now that he's experiencing what he was already informed on, now that's a factor? No. No. Watch this. Matter of fact, if I can give an example. That colloquy, and I want everybody to listen, that colloquy, that Judge Doro went over with him was basically an act of authentication. Watch this. No different than somebody that has an iPhone. If you want to get into your phone, there has to be authentication. Your phone has to know you. It has to know you. In, in other words, that colloquy before Brooks made that decision to represent himself. She act she thoroughly and accurately went over that colloquy over watched it informing him of the caveat. The caveat. As it relates, as it relates, presenting yourself. She went over that with him. And he maintained, watch this, his alleged intelligence. <laughs> By by agreement, he agreed, and so that that ain't nothing different. So that means he was at his own risk. 
he agreed to be his own ter- own attorney. So that means if there's something that he doesn't understand, the judge is not obligated to give him legal advice. Why? Because she's not counsel. Mm. Mr. Let's Brooks, my this. question to you is, do you have any position on the state's proposed jury instruction? Otherwise, I'm uh, going to rule on their request. You're going to rule on the request anyway. I got see? a lot of questions that don't get answered. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? She's She asked him a direct question relative to his position on the proposal. And then now his response is something that is indirect relative to what is supposed to be direct. He can't answer directly. I have to rule on the request, sir. It's been a proposal filed with the court. You haven't ruled on subject matter jurisdiction yet. Yes, I have. No, you have. Because subject matter jurisdiction is irrelevant. Because if it was relevant, you wouldn't be in Dodge Correctional Facility today, would you? In the event, do you have a position on the jury view, sir? Yeah, what about subject matter jurisdiction? It don't matter. One last time, Mr. Brooks, do you have a position on can the I, state's Can I go proposed... over the document, please? Can I do that, Your Honor? Oh, Respectfully, for the record, may I do that? You see how nasty he is? You see how nasty he is? Mr. Brooks, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. You seem like the same, the same thing that was there yesterday. It's not. There are some changes. What, what changes? Reference it's, it's to the same. The, it's the same document. That was, reference ret- was accepted for value and returned for value yesterday. The same document. It's not the same. The changes were put on the record verbally by the state. Um, it's taking out reference to Sally Port of the Waukesha County Jail, um, referring to it simply as a garage attached to the Waukesha County Courthouse. Those would be in the first two paragraphs. I believe the rest is the same. So it was a couple words changed. That's my understanding. So it's the same document. No, it was something changed. Let me know when you. Anything that is changed doesn't mean that it's the same. That's just like when I go to church. When I go to church, I don't expect to leave the same way that I came. Mm. In other words, I, I expect there to be a change. Come on here. Uh, I don't, in other words, I don't want to leave the same. Mm. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on in. I don't, I don't have to review the same document that was reviewed yesterday, except the value and return for value yesterday. All right, then let me ask you this, sir. Do you have... A position, position on the proposed instruction from the state. It's essentially the same document. We needed to know what was the significance of the change. What what's the significance? Garage, Sally Port, what, what is what is the relevancy of what it's called? State wanna put on the record again the basis for the changes you made. Wait a minute, hold on. Hold Hunter. on. I'm about to debunk it. I'm about to debunk it. What was the significance of you saying that you don't know who Dow Brooks is? But then you refer to yourself as Dara Brooks. What was the what was the significance of that change? Let me impugn. Let me challenge you on that. See, let, see, I can get him. Oh my God, I can shut him down. He don't want none of me. To my way of thinking, it is beneficial to the defendant. It so removes any reference to. Sally Port, which some may recognize as being part of the Waukesha County Jail. It removes reference to the jail itself. And then in the second sentence, the pattern instruction was worded and, and the court followed it. You will be taken to the Sally Port. In- I just thought it was better to change that. You will Absolutely. be taken to the garage by the jury bailiffs. Again, removing the use of the word custody is its it's factually true, but it's really irrelevant. Um, and I, just 
to be cautious, Your Honor. Just in case. Sir, do you have any? I don't, I don't, I don't Position. fundamentally understand that. Um, I, I think everyone's well aware that I'm in custody. So why does, how does the wording change with what's already known? Um, everybody knows that I'm housed in the Waukesha County Jail. Good. How does the wording change what's already known? It's reported, it's reported on every single day. Right. As it has been since the I'm, beginning of trial and even before that. Watch so this. I'm watch this. I'm even reporting it now. Even post conviction. You in jail. That was last year. I'm still reporting it. So well, here's the point. At least you saying something right. Everybody know. <laughs> think anyone is not privy to the knowledge of where I'm housed and that oh, I'm we in know. custody. Oh, we know. Um how oh, you know. how does that how does changing the wording change what's what's already known? So that way we can get it accurate on the record. Thank you. From my perspective, um, of course, when I drafted this yesterday, um, factually, uh, what I put in there uh, would be accurate because that's where the jury view is going to take place. I think changing the verbiage so that it says a garage attached to the Waukesha County Courthouse um, takes away any possibility that other law enforcement is condoning what is happening um, or somehow related to the case. Um, it is true the location was selected uh, due to your custodial status and being able to secure the area for the court, for you, for the jurors, etc. Um, but it's also a controlled environment, I think, a good thing for purposes of the jury view. Um, and so I am going to adopt the draft that was submitted by the state. It, can, it still is factually accurate. Um, the whole, and from my perspective, again, the importance of this instruction is to tell them what is and what is not evidence right, right. Um, and to instruct them and to not talk during this time they can't discuss what they see during this time this instruction uh, will be well the reason why they can't discuss because all their devices have been sequestered anytime there's a sequest uh, anything there's something that's sequestered They cannot use any device. Listen, I'm going to go. Listen, I want everybody to comment on this. Give me, I want to read your input. I know there's a lot that has been covered. But this man not only was trying to delay these proceedings. But then he tried to use mental illness as a factor. Or should I say as an exile? Because he, he was inevitably going to jail. But they needed an exit. Watch this. No different than the children of Israel being in Egypt, captivity. And there needed to be an exile of that captivity. What am I saying? Dow Brooks is deserving of captivity. And so there is no legal basis. There is no relevance. There is no reason of proposal as it relates to exile. All right, let me go, leave your comment, and we will go from there. God bless you. Please like and subscribe. We appreciate your comments, and I appreciate your subscription.